Hey guys, what's going on? It's Austin with Gone in 60. I hope all of you are having an awesome day. Uh, today we're gonna be covering some subwoofers, some powered subwoofers. So I have a couple that I wanna show you guys. We're gonna do a quick comparison on them. We're gonna show which one sounds the best. I have a decibel meter, so we'll be able to measure uh, decibels it puts out, uh, rock songs versus rap songs. Uh, I'm gonna go over kind of the features, functionality of each, but really let's just get down to which one is better, which one is the best bang for the buck, and which one puts out the most sound. So here is what we're working with today. Uh, we have the JBL uh, GT Base Pro 12. It is a ported box. And then we have the Rockford Fosgate P300, which is a sealed box. So we're gonna jump into today's video. I'm gonna start off with showing you guys the features, kind of functionality. I'm not gonna be covering hardly anything in terms of install. I'll show just maybe a couple things. Uh, I do have another video that I talked about why you wanna install a powered subwoofer in your car and how to do that. And so we're really not gonna cover that. I really wanna make it about the performance of the speakers. And with that, let's jump into it. All right guys, jumping into some of the differences. So these are both 12 inch subwoofers. Uh, like I mentioned, the JBL is a ported box. Uh, if you want a little bit more kind of booming sound, a little bit more distortion, um, then this is the box for you. If you want something a little bit more tight, a little bit more focused, a little bit more punchy, a sealed box is the best way to go. It really just depends on your preferences. Um, in terms of output, one thing that you guys wanna look at is not the total wattage. You wanna look at the RMS and the JBL, the RMS that it puts out is 150 watts and the RMS on the P300 is 300 watts. So the max output of this guy is 300 watts. The max output of this guy is 600, but on an average consistent basis, uh, the RMS, uh, that's really what you wanna look at. It's kind of the average just peak. It's gonna keep that base 150 versus 300. All right, in terms of size of the box, uh, you can see here, there is a difference between the two. Uh, the JBL is deeper and it's actually a little bit wider um, than the Rockford Fosgate is. Uh, you can also see that this is a carpeted um, construction and this kind of is a, I don't know, I'd probably say maybe a plastic, a hard plastic kind of rubber. Uh, they do have, and it comes with these, does have these guys on here, kind of the, the grill or the cover. Uh, me personally, I'm. this isn't kind of my jam. I don't like the looks of this as much, uh, but it does help protect in case you have some groceries or some golf clubs back there. Uh, I actually prefer the cover on the Rockford Fosgate better. So this is just gonna completely protect the sub, whereas this, something could kind of still get back in here and puncture this. Systems of old, I, I've had issues with stuff getting back there, like golf clubs back there and kind of rattling against the base of the sub. So this definitely is gonna protect you a little bit more. In terms of build quality, they both feel really, really good. Uh, the JBL does feel heavier than the Rockford Fosgate. Um, I'll look up some specs and throw them up on the screen for you guys. Lastly, I do think the JBL box will probably hold up better than the Rockford Fosgate. The Rockford Fosgate, based on the material, I think it's just gonna scratch a little bit. So if you don't care about that, um, then it doesn't matter. But I do think the Rockford Fosgate, based on the material, it's gonna show more wear over time, just based on the material that it has. Okay, on both of these subs, all the settings are, are very similar. Um, you have your auto turn on uh, feature, which is really nice. So I have these tapped into my rear deck speakers. Uh, so I don't have to run remote wire all the way up to my head unit, which is really nice. Uh, obviously, it has the base control knob. Um, you have your phase switch. You can see here, you can play around with your low pass, your base boost, your levels. Uh, one thing that I do not like about this box is, as you guys can see, you're obviously going to flip this over. But in order to get at these, which is your uh, power and your ground, it has a nice little cutout here so you can vertically you know, use a Phillips screwdriver to loosen these to put in battery and uh, as well as your ground. And I don't like this because you have to tilt up the box in order to get at this. You have to make sure you're using a shorter screwdriver. And as we jump over here to the Rockford Fosgate, you can see that it's just here at the side of the box. And what I like about this is it has a clip that you can put your power and your ground wire and just plug it straight into this. So if you needed to easily release this, all you do is just unplug it and there you go. Um, in terms of the settings, they're all very similar. I would say I like the knobs a little bit better on the JBL Base Pro. These are kind of cheap looking to be honest, uh, but it has the same you know, phase, high level input. Um, it does have your remote turn on feature. 
and I have adjusted these all to be the same. Uh, this does have uh, two uh, fuses in it, and it actually came with a couple extra. They're both 10 watt fuse, and over here on the JBL, it just has one, and it is a 25 um, amp fuse. And sorry, I didn't mean watt, I meant amp. So those are kind of the two different uh, fuse types on uh, the setups. So these are kind of the setups in terms of what we're working with. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put these in the car. We're gonna turn them on. We're gonna use a lot of the same settings, exact same settings as close as we can get to and see which one puts out more power. Okay, so I'm gonna put the subwoofers in the car one by one. We're gonna test them out. We're gonna have a rap song, a rock song, and we're gonna test the sound. Uh, a couple things that I wanna talk about is, guys, the, the settings and the results that I'm gonna get are gonna be probably different than what you're gonna get. Um, I have a stock head unit in my car. I don't have anything aftermarket. I'm not running anything additional. I do have my Dodge Challenger Scat Pack. It does have an Alpine stereo system in it. Um, it does have a 500 watt amp that does run an eight inch subwoofer in the trunk of the car, in the deck lid. So my readings are gonna be different than yours. So essentially I have an eight inch sub in my car and a 12 inch from the powered subwoofer. So I do have um, the, the seat down in my back seat um, I do position the subwoofers in the exact same spot as close as I can get them so all the readings and everything are as accurate as possible. I gotta hit the beat. I gotta hit the beat, beat. I gotta hit the beat. I gotta hit the beat, beat. I gotta hit the beat. All right, so I went ahead and paused this. That's about after 25 seconds of running. You can see the max we got at 106.3, the average 101.1. So now we're gonna go ahead, reset the data, and we're gonna do kind of more of a rock song. Now guys, just something to know, it really depends on the music that you're listening to. Um, you know, this is just a song that is clear to play on YouTube but it's Hit the Beat by uh, I Am Daylight. So let's go ahead and play this rock song next and uh, we'll see how it does. Alright guys, so you can see we got 107 max on that, so uh, pretty similar to uh, the other song that we're playing. This song actually sounds really good for those of you guys who are curious. It is Crash and Burn by Kissing Candace. Uh, so yeah, so that was the JBL Bass Pro. We're going to keep all the settings the same. Uh, we're going to switch it over to the Rockford Fosgate, and we're going to see how those two uh, compare. Alright guys, I got the Rockford Fosgate in. Uh, all the music settings are the same the same uh, C weighted scale here on the decibel app. Um, we're gonna start off first with kind of the rap song, let it play for 20 seconds, and then we'll jump on over to the rock song and we'll see, we'll see how these guys do. I gotta hit the beat. I gotta hit the beat. So you guys can see there, the max was 115, the average was 111. So we'll go ahead now and let's switch over to the rock song. I'll go ahead and clear out these settings and uh, we will put the rock song on with the Rockford Fosgate and see how it goes. Okay, Rockford Fosgate with the rock song test and let's get it started. with the rock song we got a max of 116 average of 108 
And that kind of concludes the test, guys. All right, guys, one thing I just want to note really quick is this is as accurate of a test as I can possibly conduct. Even a quiet room has sound in it. And, you know, maybe, you know, I'm outside, I'm in my garage, I've tried to recreate the sound the best I can. All the settings are exactly the same, volume the same, um, using the same app. But just know that it's not 100% in terms of accuracy. But I just want to give you guys kind of a good baseline so you guys can go, hey, yeah, that, that system's for me. Or, hey, maybe this system's for me. So I'm going to go ahead and talk a little bit more about the features, uh, talk a little bit more what I like about each of them, what I dislike. And then we'll kind of go over some of the sound data uh, to see uh, which one came out on top. All right, guys. So there you have it. You could see from the test that the Rockford Fosgate on average was a little bit louder than the JBL um, for both of the songs. Obviously, depending on the song that you listen to, each song is recorded differently. Some song sounds better than others, as you guys know. So here are my opinions and here are my thoughts and kind of final conclusions. In terms of pricing, they're very, very similar right now on Amazon. Uh, the JBL uh, Bass Pro as of today is about 279 and the Rockford Fosgate P300 is about 269 so very similar they're both you can get them on prime you can get them shipped really fast to you guys um, in terms of overall sound so the rockford fosgate i noticed felt tighter it felt punchier which that's due to an enclosed box uh, the jbl i did feel at times could maybe hit some of the lows just a touch better with the ported box but overall in terms of just consistent output of sound I would give a thumbs up to the Rockford Fosgate in terms of what put out the most sound and the most power and the decibel meter also confirmed that. It's not like a huge difference, but you can feel it. Um, and I felt like it was just a little bit louder. Um, in terms of build quality, I'll be honest guys, you can't go wrong with either one of these. They both are built extremely well and you can tell that they're, they're gonna last really well for you guys. So in terms of quality, uh, I, I really don't have a winner over the other. I do prefer um, on the Rockford Fosgate, the cover that goes over the subwoofer to protect it a little bit better. So I, I do enjoy that, I do like that. In terms of install, I actually like the setup of the Rockford Fosgate just a little bit better, um, just because it's easier to plug the power wire into um, and the ground wire. Uh, whereas the JBL, it's a little bit more cumbersome. Um, I do kind of like that the JBL um, has the set the setup in the back where you can get to it. The Rockford Fosgate's on the side. For me, where I drive a lot of times with my rear seat down, it's nice to just be able to, if I want to quickly adjust it, um, just do it right there from the back of it. So I, I do like that better on the JBL. Um, you know, the Rockford Fosgate, I just have to twist it to the side. I actually put Velcro on the bottom of my subwoofers so they stay in really good. And I do have a video on that as well. And I had a really hard time getting this JBL out. Another thing that I, I, I do want to highlight that I do think makes a difference. Um, the, these packages come with uh, a lot of the same components, bass knob, um, high level output speaker wire. Um, it, there's, there's a couple things that I like better that the Rockford Fosgate does over the JBLs. They do include a couple amps, which I don't remember my JBL coming with extra amps. So I like that. Um, and also the Rockford Fosgate, it included some um, Velcro that you can put on the bottom of the box as well as your carpet to hold in there. So I do think the Rockford Fosgate comes just with a little bit more components. Make sure you guys are looking into how to install a powered subwoofer just before you buy one because there are additional things that you guys need. So guys, I've had this JBL in my car now for, I don't know, about six months. I've enjoyed it. I haven't had any issues with it. I haven't had any overheating. I haven't had any problems. But in terms of what I'm doing going forward, I'm actually gonna be selling the JBL and keeping the Rockford Fosgate. So guys, that's my opinion. Um, I tried to make this test as accurate as I could, but I'm sure there's some discrepancies in there. But I hope this gives you guys a good buyer's guide. This was the video that I wanted someone to do when I was looking for both of these subs. So hopefully I saved you guys some time. Hopefully I saved you guys some money. I hope you guys have fun with your, your subwoofers that you install. Uh, please uh, like this video if you like it or give it a thumbs down if you don't like it. But guys, really appreciate all your support and uh, have a great day and we'll catch you next time.